I adore the same Govinda, the primeval Lord, in whose praise men who are imbued with devotion sing the mantra shuktas told by the Vedas. By gaining their appropriate beauty, greatness, thrones, conveyances, and ornaments. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's purport. In discussing Ras, we meet with five kinds of devotion. Shanta, or unattached, Dasya, pertaining to reverential, willing service, Sakya, friendship, Vatsalya, parental love, and Shringara, juvenile love. The devotees surcharged with the ideas of their respective service serve Krishna eternally and ultimately reach the goal of their respective ideals. Those who are advocates of Shantaras attain the region of Brahma Paramatma, the seat of eternal peace. Those of Dasyaras get to Vaikuntha, the spiritual majestic abode of Sri Narayan. Those of Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya Ras attain Golokadam, Krishna's abode above Vaikuntha. They worship Krishna by mantras depicted in the Vedas with the ingredients and objects befitting their respective rasas in those regions. The Vedas, under the influence of this spiritual potency in certain passages, speak of the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Liberated souls chant the name, qualities, and pastimes of the Supreme Lord under the guidance of that same spiritual potency. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, residing in his own realm, Goloka, with Radha, resembling his own spiritual figure, the embodiment of the ecstatic potency, possessed of the 64 artistic activities, in the company of her confidants, Sakis, embodiments of the extensions of her bodily form, Ras. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saras. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's purport. Although the Lord Absolute and His potency are one and the self-same existence, still they exist eternally as separate entities, as Radha and Krishna. In both the ecstatic energy and the transcendental Lord Krishna, there exists Shringara Ras, amorous love, whose quality is inconceivable. The Vibhava, extension of that Ras, is twofold, Alambana and Udipana. Of these, Alambana is also twofold. Ashraya, supported, and Vishaya, supporter. Ashraya signifies Radhika and the extensions of her own form, and Vishaya means Krishna or Govinda, Lord of Goloka. The gopis are the facsimile Ashraya of that Ras. With them, Krishna indulges in eternal pastimes in Goloka. In his writings, Srila Jiva Goswami expresses a profound implication. Joyous pastimes by the medium of seeming error, Vibrama Vilas, and the contrivance of Yoga Maya, has also been admitted in the concluding statements of Rupa and Sanatana. Still, since Sripad Jiva Goswami has established the identity of Goloka in the spiritual sky, with Gokul manifest on the seemingly mundane plane, it must be admitted that there is transcendental reality underlying all the pastimes of Gokul. The 64 arts mentioned in this verse do in reality exist unstintedly only in Goloka. Unwholesomeness, insignificance, and grossness are found in those arts in accordance with the degree of self-realization on the part of aspirants after the knowledge of the Absolute. According to Srila Rupa 
and Srila Sanatan, all those pastimes that have been visible in Gokul, exist in all purity and freed from all tinge of limitation in Goloka. So, transcendental autocratic paramourship also exists in Goloka in inconceivable purity, judged by the same standard and reasoning. Sri Jiva, in his commentary, acknowledges the eternal paramourship of Krishna in Goloka and Gokul, and the husbandhood of Krishna in Vaikuntha and Dwarka, etc. In the Lord of Goloka and the Lord of Gokul, the character of paramourship is found in its complete form. Krishna's deliberate overstepping of his own quality of self-delightedness is caused by the desire of union with another's wedded wife. The state of being another's wedded wife is nothing but the corresponding assumed sentiment on the part of the gopis. In reality, they have no husbands with independent and separate existence. Still, their very egotistic sentiment makes them have the nature of the wedded wives of others. So all the characteristics, such as desire makes the paramour overstep the bounds of duty, etc., are eternally present in the seat of all deliciousness. In Braj, that very thing reveals itself, to an extent, in a form more tangible to persons with mundane eyes. Whatever is observable in Gokul Ras should be visible in Goloka Ras in a clearly explicit form. Hence, the distinction of paramorship and concubinage, the variegatedness of the respective Rasas of all different persons, the earth, water, rivers, hills, porticos, bowers, cows, etc. All the features of Gokul exist in Goloka, disposed in an appropriate manner. There is only this peculiarity, that the mundane conceptions of human beings possessed of material judgment regarding those transcendental entities do not exist there. The conception of Goloka manifests itself differently in proportion to the degree of realization of the various pastimes of Braj, and it is very difficult to lay down any definite criteria as to which portions are mundane and which are uncontaminated. The more the eye of devotion is tinged with the salve of love, the more will the transcendental concept gradually manifest itself. So there is no need of further hypothetical speculation, which does not improve one's spiritual appreciation, as the substantive knowledge of Goloka is an inconceivable entity. To try to pursue the inconceivable by the conceptual process is like pounding the empty husk of grain, which is sure to have a fruitless ending. It is, therefore, one's bounden duty by refraining from the endeavor to know, to try to gain the experience of the transcendental by the practice of pure devotion. Unalloyed, parakya ras, free from all mundane conception, is a most rare attainment. It is this which has been described in the narrative of the pastimes of Gokul. Those devotees who follow the dictate of their pure, spontaneous love should base their devotional endeavors on that narrative. They will thus attain to the more wholesome, fundamental principle on reaching the stage of realization. The devotional activities characterized by illicit amour, as practiced by worldly-minded conditioned souls, are forbidden mundane impiety. The heart of our apostle, Sripad Jiva Goswami, was very much moved by such practices and induced him to give us his conclusive statements on the subject. It is the duty of a pure Vaishnav to accept the real spirit of his statements. It is a great offense 
to disrespect the Acharya and to seek to establish a different doctrine in opposition to him.